Um, so basically, after all this, uh, Manet moves back to Paris. He's, he's an urbanite. He continues to paint real people in real urban settings, and many times in his paintings you see people like in top hats next to somebody smoking a pipe, you know, and he, he continues these kind of cafe concert, uh, is, is a perfect example, that painting. Um, he continues painting these things which represent normal everyday people. Um, then he hits hard and he makes like his big last greatest painting in 1881, <clears throat> and that is a bar at the Folier Bergeret. Sorry, very, very sorry for pronunciation on that. But yeah, nothing worse than an American speaking French. Um, and this painting is just sick. I mean, this is like Mont Manet at like every, you know, every single level you could possibly imagine. It's just ridiculous. Um, you take take a look. First of all, this is a mirror. Okay, you're coming up to her. She's at the bar. Behind her is this giant mirror. That's the first thing you gotta know, right? So when you when you first approach this painting, you're looking straight at this girl. She's like practically smack in the center of the composition, staring you smack in the face. Um, these girls were also prostitutes a lot of the time, and um, you know we got the. the the same fruit going on, we got all the, the liquor to the right, of course, and the champagne bottles. Um, but check this out. Look in the mirror, and um, you get this woman right here. She's got like opera glasses on, and she's watching. It's like all these people are watching stuff. And this whole painting is, is about watching, you know? It's what the painting is about. Um, on the top left, this is another really strange, strange decision to make. Um, he put these little green feet of a trapeze artist. I mean, what a strange decision to put that in the top left corner, but great. Um, on, the, on the right side, we, we get this reflection, and we see her back, and there is a man in the top hat, this kind of mysterious stranger, and we can kind of think of that man, he's like our avatar, almost, you know? <laughs> and um, he's our avatar for looking at this painting. And, um, he is you, you know? And, uh, of course the reflection would never work like that, but if, but also, you can do anything you want in painting, that's why it's better than photography. You know, you can make a reflection like that and make the viewer in the painting, and you're cool with it, you know? That's what's so great about it. Um, but this painting, at the same time, it still represents the same thing, it's a cafe scene but it's also guttural. The fact that this woman probably was a prostitute is, is also um, something that just confronts reality and something that Manet was always striving to do. Um, and of course, the, the Impressionists uh, definitely carried, carried the, uh, the flame on that one. Um, big things to remember about Manet. Why do people call him the, the father of modern art? Okay, this is why. Uh, he, f he was inside the system, he fought the system for humanistic paintings about reality, and he was very, very individualistic in that pursuit, but he also had paintings which were extremely controversial, okay? Um, Olympia and Le Déjeuner sous l'herbe, um, both really controversial paintings, which kind of, in a way, thrust him into the spotlight, but, you know, he had, he had everything going cool, you know, he did the Spanish singer, and things looked okay, you know, maybe he was going to be okay, and then he did Olympia, and it was just like, whoa. So, we can also think about that with the way that shock and controversy is, is many times associated with modern art, and in terms of that, Manet was the king. Thanks for watching, and, um, Next, I think we'll do Monet next. Yeah? Stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter or pull my RSS feed or friend me on Facebook, whatever you want to do. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Ciao.